The Pacific Ocean was dark and quiet that night. Only the sound of waves hitting the USS Archerfish broke the silence. Inside the submarine's metal structure, Captain Joseph F. Enright stood at the periscope, eyes scanning the horizon. He was experienced and sure of himself, but his mind was filled with doubt, haunted by a past failure that nearly ended his career. This night was different, though, and Enright's focus remained fixed on the dark seas, driven by a need to make things right. And then he saw it, a faint shape in the distance, a large unknown enemy ship on the water. Just before midnight, on November 28, 1944, the USS Archerfish roared to life, starting its chase about a hundred miles south of Tokyo Bay. The captain sent an urgent message to Pearl Harbor, reading, quote, I am pursuing a large aircraft carrier. Unknowingly, Archerfish had found the Shinano, the world's largest aircraft carrier, on a desperate nighttime run from Yokosuka to Japan's inland sea. Just like Captain Enright's fearless approach to combat, get ready for your thrilling adventure with Enlisted, a virtual experience that redefines FPS gameplay by delivering intensity on par with Enright's time aboard USS Archerfish. But Enlisted is not just a game, it's an immersive journey that seamlessly blends PvP and PvE combat. Command your squad of AI soldiers and dive into massive battles that always feel like you're really there, offering a fresh experience every time you step into combat. The kicker, Enlisted is free. Whether you're a casual player or a hardcore enthusiast, there's a place for you in the midst of the action. With over a hundred weapons, tanks, and aircraft, its arsenal is vast, from the Garand rifle to the MP40. You'll find a weapon that suits your playstyle to participate in striking scenarios where historical authenticity is a priority. You will truly feel like a part of the battles. Click the link in the description to play for free on PC, PlayStation 4 and 5, or Xbox One, Series X, and S and get an exclusive bonus for Dark Seas viewers that includes several days of premium time and many orders of troops and weapons. Epic action awaits you in Enlisted. Step into history and dominate the battlefield. In the darkest days of World War II, as the balance of power began to tip against the once almighty Japanese Empire, an audacious plan was hatched within the halls of the Imperial Navy. Following the devastating loss of four fleet carriers at the Battle of Midway in June 1942, the Japanese Empire recognized a dire need for a vessel that could replenish the fleet, redefine naval warfare, and above all, save the Empire. Laid down in 1940, Shinano was initially envisioned as the third Yamato-class battleship, a sister to Yamato and Musashi. However, fate had other plans for this massive, still-under-construction battleship. The Japanese Navy decided to convert it into an aircraft carrier, surpassing all others in size, capability, and might. The work on converting Shinano into a carrier began in 1943, drastically altering her design to include a flight deck, hangar decks, and other essential features for aircraft operations. This conversion was both a titanic undertaking and a high-stakes gamble for the Imperial Navy. As such, the new ship's existence became one of Japan's most closely guarded wartime secrets, and great efforts were made to keep the Allies in the dark. A tall fence was erected on three sides of the graving dock, and any mention of the new ship would bring the most severe of punishments upon anyone indiscreet enough to speak of it. As a result, Shinano became the only major warship built in the 20th century, never to be officially photographed during its construction. But Shinano was no ordinary vessel. It was to become the largest aircraft carrier of its time, a behemoth displacing around 72,000 tons designed to cripple as many Allied ships as possible. Below deck, Shinano was equipped with state-of-the-art technology including extensive compartmentalization to enhance her survivability, an almost unsinkable ship, and a sophisticated damage control system. Her arsenal was equally impressive. It wielded a formidable set of anti-aircraft guns, a clear warning to any who dared challenge her supremacy. Inside, Shinano was ready to house a fleet of aircraft, prepared to be unleashed at a moment's notice. More than just a ship, Shinano symbolized Japan's refusal to bow down. As she neared completion, this wonder of naval engineering awaited her place as the crown jewel of the Japanese Navy. As work on Shinano progressed in Japan, a smaller American submarine was built and finished in record time, with only nine months between her keel being laid down and her commissioning. USS Archerfish, a 1,500-ton Balao-class submarine, measured 311 feet in length and displaced 1,526 tons. 
the sleek submarine specifications, while modest compared to the behemoths that patrolled the waters, were ideally suited for her designated role as a hunter of the deep. Powered by diesel engines and electric motors, she could reach 20.25 knots while surfaced and 8.75 knots submerged. Her impressive range allowed for extended patrols in enemy-infested waters. Her armament was also highly effective, equipped with 10 21-inch torpedo tubes, a 5-inch deck gun, and robust anti-aircraft defenses. During World War II, Archerfish was assigned to the Pacific Theater, with her patrols primarily focused on the waters off Japan and around the South China Sea, where she was tasked with intercepting Japanese shipping and naval vessels. USS Archerfish embarked on her maiden patrol in May 1944, under the watchful eye of Lieutenant Commander George W. Kell, cutting through the turbulent waters of the Marianas Islands. For a time, bad luck seemed to follow the small Archerfish, as unfavorable weather prevented her crew from spotting and attacking targets. Frustration mingled with determination as Archerfish's crew continued honing their skills, their hunger for victory growing daily. Finally, on Archerfish's third patrol in June 1944, she struck with precision, attacking and sinking an 800-ton Japanese patrol craft, a small but significant triumph in the vast and unforgiving Pacific Theater. With the arrival of a new commander, Captain Robert Clark, Archerfish's fourth patrol marked a turning point for the submarine. During this time, the crew managed to sink several vessels, including destroyer escort. Confidence bloomed within the steel hull of the Archerfish as she proved her worth. But this would soon change. Right before the submarine's fifth patrol in the fall of 1944, a new commander, Joseph F. Enright, took the helm. Captain Enright was no stranger to the demanding nature of submarine warfare. A seasoned naval officer, he had previously been the commander of the USS Dace, a Gato-class submarine. While leading this vessel, he had an opportunity to attack the Japanese aircraft carrier Shokaku, but the torpedoes failed to hit the target. This failure resulted in his removal from command in 1943, and soon Enright found himself yearning for a chance at redemption. His opportunity came with USS Archerfish. Enright steered Archerfish into her fifth patrol on October 30th, 1944, prowling the waters off Japan, a region teeming with enemy vessels, but also fraught with danger. He was a driven man, carrying the weight of past errors and determined to prove himself. Enright's leadership style was cautious yet aggressive. He emphasized thorough training and preparation, instilling in his crew the same passion and sense of duty that burned within him. Fate had something extraordinary in store for this determined submarine and her seasoned commander. Two weeks after Archerfish departed for her fifth patrol and under her new leadership, the Imperial Japanese Navy formally commissioned the supercarrier Shinano on November 19th in Tokyo. Worried for her safety, following a flyover by a U.S. reconnaissance bomber near her location, the Navy General Staff ordered the carrier to depart for Kure immediately, where the remainder of her fitting out would take place. However, her captain, Toshio Abe, requested a delay in the sailing date. Most of the ship's watertight doors had yet to be installed, and the compartment air tests were still pending. Unsealed holes for electrical cables, ventilation ducts, and pipes were widespread. The fire mains and bailing systems, lacking pumps, were inoperable. Most importantly, Abe stressed that although the majority of the 1900 officers and crew had seagoing experience, they still lacked training with the portable pumps on board. After Shinano's escorting destroyers for the voyage, Isokaze, Yukikaze, and Hamakaze returned from the Battle of Leyte Gulf to undergo repairs, as well as a resting period for their crews, the carrier left Tokyo Bay on November 28th. Aboard the unfinished ship, upon which the Empire had pinned its hopes for securing the Pacific, hung a large portrait of Emperor Hirohito on the flying bridge, surrounded by limited quantities of stores and ammunition. That month, Archerfish was assigned lifeguard duties for the first wave of B-29 superfortresses poised to strike mainland Tokyo. While Captain Enright and his crew understood the importance of rescuing American Air Corps crewmen who had ditched in the Pacific, they were restless for action. When the airstrikes against Tokyo were cancelled on November 11th, Archerfish was free to patrol the waters near Tokyo Bay, seeking out enemy vessels. On the night of November 28th, a thrilling opportunity arose. Captain Enright spotted a massive enemy presence on the sea's surface. 
After surfacing, the submarine's lookouts confirmed it, an enormous aircraft carrier, escorted by several destroyers. The Imperial convoy detected Ultrafish with their radar and quickly began making swift and elusive maneuvers to evade the American submarine. A nail-biting six-hour chase followed between the small submarine and the Japanese's saving grace. In addition to the inexperienced crew, Commander Toshio Abe had misjudged the number of his pursuers. He incorrectly assumed that a pack of submarines was tracking him, as was the standard procedure, and Archerfish was only a decoy. When Abe engaged in usual zigzagging tactics, he actually zigzagged his way straight into Archerfish, a tiny vessel he could have outrun if he just continued on a straight path. These mistakes gave Enright the opening he needed. Knowing that he was chasing something huge, even if he didn't know exactly what it was, Enright decided to launch his torpedoes a bit higher than normal. To sink anything that big, he decided, might need to be attacked further up its hull. While this deviated from protocol, the skipper was following his gut instinct. He was correct. After patiently trailing the ship, he then maneuvered the submarine ahead of it and waited for it to fall into the line of fire. When she did, he ordered the boat to submerge and prepare to attack. Shortly before he launched his torpedoes, Captain Enright took one final quick look at the Japanese ship through his periscope, quickly making a sketch of the ship for future reference. When the submarine's target was just 1,400 yards away, Archerfish fired six torpedoes at the carrier. After watching two torpedoes hit the mystery ship, the submarine quickly went deeper into the ocean to avoid retaliatory depth charges from the destroyers. At least six of Enright's torpedoes hit Shinano. The third strike was particularly disastrous, flooding one of the boiler rooms. When the incomplete structure failed, two adjacent compartments also flooded. Whether due to a lack of training or equipment, the crew could not counter the flooding fast enough. In desperation, Captain Abe had two of the destroyers in the group try to tow Shinano near the shore, hoping to beach her and have the vessel live to fight another day. But it was a lost cause, and the inexperienced crew could do nothing to save her. Soon, the captain gave the order to abandon the ship. Less than an hour later, the ill-fated vessel that never got the chance to fulfill her mission finally capsized, sinking stern first with a loss of 1,435 people, including the captain, who chose to go down with his ship. After 48 days on site, the triumphant 5th Patrol of USS Archerfish came to a close on December 15th. Initially, the Office of Naval Intelligence acknowledged that Archerfish had sunk a cruiser, not believing that any carriers were in that stretch of ocean. However, Captain Enright had made sketches of the target, and he and the submarine were later credited with sinking a 28,000-ton carrier. The sub received the Presidential Unit Citation, and Captain Enright was awarded the Navy Cross. Whatever it was, the now vindicated Enright and his crew knew that they'd hit a really big ship, and they sailed on to their next war patrol. It wasn't until after the war that the captain and all his men learned the truth. Archerfish had made history by destroying the Imperial Japanese Navy's Shinano, the largest warship of the entire conflict. To this day, Archerfish holds the record for sinking the biggest ship that a submarine has ever taken down. Following this revelation, Fleet Admiral Chester W. Nimitz concluded by saying, quote, it is fitting that an American submarine should climax the undersea campaign against Japanese warships by sending down the new queen of the Imperial Navy before she had an opportunity to come into action. Ready to embark on a journey with Enlisted? Click the link in the description below to start playing for free and receive your bonus content. Fortune favors the bold, and playing Enlisted will test your combat prowess. See you at the front.